Jim. Name, date, serial number. <laughs> John Picard. And the first time I went hunting was in 1961 with my dad. I was four years old, and he shot a uh, muley fork horn uh, with one hand and holding me down with the other hand because he said I was so excited. Hold the antlers up, Dan. No, you a little help. Yeah, you bring it up there and help him, Justin. So we moved up to Montana in 1990. I was three, yeah. Justin was five. Yeah. And we grew up basically in the middle of nowhere. In, forest, in the woods next to the Forest Service, in the yeah, road. Yeah, 10 acres. And we were really lucky because we hunted in our yard yeah. some of the time and we could go hike up the mountain and, and hunt yeah. whenever we wanted. Yeah. Experience started from the beginning. And I remember, you know, from the beginning, hunting with you when we were little kids and that that first experience actually down on the river me and Justin sitting by the tree Justin had blood on his face that was 90 that was when you were three and five and that deer come running by and I, I shot her at like point blank like six or eight feet and she flopped over dead right in front of us like a toucher with the gun barrel we we're sitting you on either side of and Justin on either side of me and it's like we all had blood splattered on us from that deer flopping down like that. Yeah, and you guys' eyes are big as dinner plates. I think from then on, I mean, that exciting experience probably had us hooked yeah. for the rest of our lives. I mean, that's all we did in the fall was hunt yeah. with you. Yeah, I always took you guys with me. You're my best hunting buddies, so, yeah. you know, I always took you with me, and uh, yeah, we spooked a lot of game because you guys were quiet and didn't know what was going <laughs> yeah. on, but you learned. Yeah. You learned at an early age. I'm very grateful that we grew up in the place that we did and, and you took the time to take me and Justin hunting when we were probably just a couple snot-nosed kids. We never really hunted for antlers. You were never a trophy hunter. And so you never killed a bull elk. Never caught, killed a bull elk. Well, I killed lots of antelope and lots and lots of cow elk, but never a bull. Regular 280, huh? Probably a little bit. Yeah. Paula held right on it, 260, and killed that bull. So that first morning, we basically left the truck in the dark, four miles in to the lookout point, get to the vantage point right at first light so we could see up this drainage, down the drainage. Being there at first light, I felt was important, especially early in the season when those elk are going to bed, you know, hour and a half into daylight. So we, we hike in the first morning and get to the vantage point. And we saw a, f a handful of bulls, if I remember right. Yeah, nothing four or five big. bulls, but nothing big. Nothing big. We sat there all day and then it glassed into the evening to see what came out in the evening as well. We saw the same bulls again, but we saw another six point that came out that we didn't see in the morning. We're gonna give it a shot. The wind's gonna be going right down towards them. And that's, this, these north faces are timber. So, I mean, if we get to that point, we're not gonna probably be able to see. I always spend a morning and an evening at a glassing location just so you make sure you see everything in there. Not necessarily you're gonna see everything, but that's the hopes of it. You need a morning and evening to do that. Right. He wasn't a lot bigger if he was. Shh. And so the next day we decided there was enough action that we were gonna do it again.
boom, boom, and it's like, where do these boom, shots come boom, from? Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. And it's public land. There's hunters out there. That's just the way it is. Yeah. And we were discouraged, and we were out of there. Just tell us what we're doing. Oh, we're here by... Don't say where we're at. It's oh, top it's secret. A, it's a big secret. Okay. We're in eastern Montana. We're in eastern Montana, somewhere in the middle of nowhere, hunting elk. And we've seen elk, and we've seen deer, but nothing big enough that PH Daniel will let me put a tag on. And for the record, before we started hunting, he's like, I want to shoot a 330 or bigger. And then, like a week before the hunt, 325 is fine. And we're actually out here hunting. He's like, I'll shoot that one. I'm like, that thing's like 280. He's like, I'll shoot it. <laughs> That's a real hunter right there. Chest hair out and everything. We knew there was elk. Down across the other side and in the far side, there's a big north face, it's just solid timber. And we knew there was elk in there, so we positioned ourselves that afternoon to get in there. Nice solid six point, and we went after it. was rutting the cows and he was bugling. Yeah. And he was with what well, was like 20 cows or so and they fed onto the backside of the mountain and we figured they're going to bed and so we went for it. We got over there and, and Justin and you and I were in the timber and here come the cows across his face back down into the dark timber we were at. And so I got ready with my rifle. But the bull just came trotting across just like the cows. It didn't take as much time as the cows did. And he was in the timber and I never had a chance for a shot. Yeah, we were in a good spot and they ended up, instead of betting on the back face, they came back out into the main drainage. Yeah. And like we're in our face, in our lap, all of a sudden, and it's just one of those situations where it just wasn't meant to be. Jeez. You kind of rested up and, and then Justin went home and then just me and you went back up there. And we ended up just going to the same spot 
we just believed in the routine that we're doing. There's enough elk in there. Asthma developed and <laughs> you get older, you get all this other old people's stuff. I got gout in my foot on top of it, you know, but yeah. I got it all under control, but the asthma is still a battle every day. That's a really nice bull. We found a giant this morning, a big bull. It's 1,100 yards. We're going to try to get down to at least 400 from him, if not a little closer. I was like, let's go. I already had a program down. I already had a route where we were going to get down there. Basically, these bulls are down in the bottom, just on the other side at the base of the trees. If we can get down to the bottom and shoot across that creek, we're going to be golden. That's what I'm thinking. You were at that point, you weren't asking questions. You were just like, I'm, yeah, I'm on let's, this. Let's do it. This is the kill train. I'm saddling. I'm hopping on. This is like, OK, we can get set up and make a shot here. We put our stuff down, I laid down and got my bipods out and got the rifle in position and got ready for a shot. Reload, reload, you hit him, you hit him. Oh, Good job! Down. Yes, baby! Yes! He's down, he's huge! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy. You're happy. I just shot my only bull elk. He went down again that second time when he went down hard, but his head, he picked his head up again. Yeah. And then you shot him again. You thread the needle through those limbs and you hit him perfect quarter and away and he died shortly thereafter. Oh, I got an elk. I got a bull elk. No, after. no, no. You didn't just kill a bull elk. That's a huge bull. That's a big bull. That's a 350 bull. That's what it wanted. That's a 350 bull. That's what it wanted. And I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so lucky. You got spoiled so bad. I think you're like, well, I'm never gonna shoot another bull elk in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Don't need to, I yeah. got one. I push in his eyeballs, eyelid comes down, he's done. Yeah. What a freaking toad. That's a big bull, dude. He's 350. So you're gunning down to go pick him up. Are you kidding me? Look at the backs on that thing. <sighs> I'm looking at this bull and I'm like, oh my gosh, you are so lucky. You're such a spoiled brat. I raised a spoiled brat. <laughs> Aren't they all this big? <laughs> <laughs> and the, the, the video you took at the time there, it's like, yeah, aren't they all this big? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because I, I never shot one. This is what a 7x7 seven seven looks like, right? Yeah. yeah. No big deal. Yeah. He's 355. <sighs> He's big. That's the, one of the most beautiful bulls I've ever seen. Well, that's what I wanted. <laughs> well, God answered my prayer. Mm -hmm. Got your first bull elk there, Dad. Yeah, first bull elk on October 31st, 2018, Halloween. Halloween, Halloween I, bull. Yep, and I shot my first buck 48 years ago on Halloween, 48 so years ago today. So I think the only day I'm gonna go out hunting anymore is Halloween. First bull, first buck on Halloween, 48 years apart. That's pretty crazy. Yeah, it is. And this is your first bull. My first bull, yeah. Holy smokes. Yeah. That the, the picture you had made for me, you're standing behind me as proud of me as I was of you guys when you guys were young. And it just got a flop to a flip flop. A yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you were proud of your dad, whereas I was always proud of you guys when you were younger. Since this lower one 
down pretty good. Keep that meat riding high as possible. I'm back at the bowl by myself. Dad's pretty gassed out. Uh, he's got chronic asthma, so it was getting him pretty good. The figures the least I could do is pack his bowl out for him. Uh, we got a couple more loads. <clears throat> Hind quarter, some extra gear here, and then the head and the cape down there will be the last load. Everybody probably has memories growing up hunting with their family. Most guys, a lot of our subscribers, the hunting heritage has been in their family uh, for a long time. And so that's where it was cool for me is to be able to share that with you and Justin. So like I said, that's probably one of the best hunts I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Love you, Dad, that was awesome. <laughs> yeah, love Good you shooting. Too. Uh, we thought I would just uh, score it real quick when we got home. Daniel couldn't wait. Of course, I already asked him. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it scores 375 and 7 eighths. Oh my gosh! 